up everyone, I'm Rachel. Welcome to my little corner of the world where I experiment with soap making and other DIY projects. Today I'm making myself some shampoo bars with a bunch of leftover oils and essential oils, so I'm just gonna throw it all together in one batch. No added colors or nothing. And I need a little bit of soap anyways because I'm gonna pour a thin green sheet for my project for next Sunday. So if you're curious how that's gonna turn out, what I'm doing with it, stick around and watch again next week. There's a little bit of math involved when you are creating your own recipes, but nothing crazy. So I'm gonna walk you through all of it right now. Before you begin calculating your own recipes, you wanna make sure that you understand the properties of different fats and how they behave in soap, because not all fats are created equal in how they behave, even though they will all turn into soap. Some of them might be too cleansing, some of them might be too soft, some of them might be too brittle. So the idea is to have a good balance in your recipe to make sure that you have a nice soap in the end result. First, what I'm doing here is measuring out how much I have left of some of these bottles. I had just a little bit left of sweet almond and jojoba, so I went ahead and measured those out and wrote them down on my note card because I usually just write out my recipes on a note card first to make sure everything is calculated correctly. And I had a little bit of shea butter left in this bucket, so I went ahead and scraped that out too. And I have some hemp seed oil. I'm gonna add some of that in. And I usually do about 5% castor oil in any recipe and about a third olive oil and a third coconut oil. You can do up to 100% of olive oil, but it takes a lot longer to cure because it's softer at first, even though it makes a nice hard bar in the end. And coconut oil, you don't want to use more than a third because it can be very cleansing and kind of dry out your skin. So that's just a couple examples. Shea butter, you don't want to go above 20% because it can make your soap too soft. Cocoa butter, you don't want to go above 20 or 30% because it can make your soap too brittle. And castor oil makes a nice bubbly lather, but you don't want to go above like 5-6%-ish because otherwise your soap could be a little bit tacky because it's a humectant. So those are just some things to keep in mind, but you would want to do your own research and look up some oils charts to see what good usage rates are and what their shelf life is, how they behave. So I wrote down everything so far on my recipe card that I have measured out. Now I'm gonna calculate out what the percentage would be because I want a total of about 46 ounces. And I want about a third of that to be olive oil and a third coconut oil like I mentioned. So that's why I added up the other ones first. And then now I'm adding in the olive and the coconut. It's also good to just have about a 50-50 ratio of hard to soft oils and butters. So now that I have everything measured out, what I'm gonna do is take this recipe and plug it into soapcalc.net. And that is gonna then tell me how much lye I need for this recipe because all fats have a slightly different saponification value, meaning that it would need a slightly different amount of lye in order to convert it into soap. So here I am on soapcalc.net. It's a pretty easy website to use. You make sure that you have NaOH, which is the chemical formula for sodium hydroxide or lye. And then I totaled up how many total ounces of my oils and butters that I had and plugged that in. Then I chose to do a lower water to lye ratio, I did one and a half to one. And the reason for that is because I'm gonna add in some goat milk from a friend of mine. I froze it into cubes, so that's gonna make up another portion of my liquid, but I'm mixing that in with the oils. Now I'm doing a 5% super fat, and I just put zero for the fragrance because I calculate that separately. So after I have that plugged in, then I plug in all of the different fats that I have in this recipe and then how many ounces of each in the chart. And then all you have to do is click calculate recipe and it pops you onto this separate screen and it shows you everything that you typed in and then shows you how much water and lye you need for your recipe. Now that I know how much lye I need to saponify all of my fats, I'm measuring out the water, and I usually do it in ice cubes just because it helps cut down on the fumes because with this exothermic reaction, it really heats up quickly. So I put my ice cubes in there, and then I'm measuring out my lye. I usually just give my bottle a little shake to 
help prevent any clumps. I got a little zealous and over poured here, so I have to put a tiny bit back. So there is my lye. Now I'm going to combine it with my cubes and start stirring. And that heat will help melt down those cubes pretty quickly. And then I have my lye solution ready to go. And I usually add in a couple teaspoons of sodium lactate, which is kind of like a salt, which helps harden bars just so you can unmold them faster. And I feel like it helps with the lather a little bit too. So once I'm done with my lye solution, I have everything ready to go for my soap besides the little extra stuff. So here's my goat milk cubes that I'm adding in with my hot oils. The oils are at 129 degrees, but after adding in these frozen cubes, that should bring down the temperature just a little bit. And the sugar that's in milk really gives a nice lather to soap, which is part of why I'm adding it in, especially since I'm using these as shampoo bars. So my lye solution is at 102. I'm just gonna do a quick whiz with the stick blender to get all of that goat milk mixed in with the oils and then I'll take that temperature again. And we are at 99. So both of them are right in the right range that I like and within 10 degrees of each other. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour in my lye solution with the oils. And now the saponification process has begun. First, I'm gonna blend this up and then pour off just a little bit into my pouring pitcher because that's gonna be for my green sheet. I put in a little bit of spirulina powder and some green, like an olive green mica from Dibble Dabble. I mixed up those with just a little bit of oil just to give it a nice greenish natural color. So I'm just gonna get this to a light trace at first. So just enough where it seems like everything is well incorporated, but still pretty thin. It took me quite a while to get this to a thicker trace before I could pour it onto this freezer paper on this baking sheet. So I'm gonna kind of skip through part of that because I seriously had to stick blend for several minutes. Not sure why it was moving so slowly, but yeah, it, it did this time. So that's just the thing. You experiment and you never know how it's gonna turn out. And I had to rinse that off so I was ready to mix in the rest of this. So I did not add any scent to this because I'm saving it for my soap project for next week. For the rest of the soap batter, it's going into my 42 ounce purple silicone mold. And I'm gonna make some shampoo bars with that as I mentioned. But I like kind of a refreshing smell in the shower, especially to help wake me up sometimes. So I had some leftover essential oil blends that I had made for other projects, some bath bombs, another different soap. So in this blend, we've got some lemon and lime essential oils and then spearmint and peppermint and also some tea tree and eucalyptus. So I'm just gonna dump all the rest of those essential oils into that. And I added in some of this marshmallow root powder as well. Marshmallow root is like a natural detangler and with me having curly hair it gets kind of wild. I don't wash it every single day. I only wash it every few days but it can be kind of a tangly mess by the time I decide to tackle it. So I'm hoping that by adding this in it will help my hair do a little bit better when I'm washing but still have a decent amount of cleansing because I did use a little over 30% of coconut oil in it. So yeah, I'm excited to try these for shampoo bars for myself. And if they work out well, I will consider making another recipe to share with you guys later. I have this cute little envelope mold that I've been using lately from my neighbor just to pour off some little samples. So I'll share some of these with a few friends just so they can let me know what do they think of it as a shampoo bar. And I like to have different people with different hair types try it. So I'm all about experimenting and making sure that this is going to work not just for me but for other people. I am going to do a lather test at the end. And one thing I wanted to note that I forget to mention sometimes Everyone has different water. Some people have city water, some people have well water, some people have filtered water, some people have softened water. So 
my husband told me that apparently he's had the water softener turned off for a little while and I've been wondering why some of my recipes have not been lathering up as much as normal. And that is why. So in this test, this is just straight up well water. And when you have some extra minerals in the water, sometimes that can bind with the soap molecules and it just doesn't make as nice of a lather. So I might bug him to turn it back on for a little while just so I can test it out in the shower. I am now done texturing the top. I'm going to spray everything down with some isopropyl alcohol just to cut down on soda ash. Then I'm going to cover everything up. I'll throw a big baking sheet over top and then use my other purple mold to cover this purple mold. So yeah, we're going to let everything sit for a couple days and then we will be ready to cut them together. Well, that is it for today's soap making adventure. I hope you found this super interesting and not too complicated, but you can definitely leave me a comment if you have any questions. I'm pretty fast at responding. I will see you guys next week so you can see what I'm going to do with that green sheet of soap. Bye.